Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, hello. Ah, uh, perfect. Are we live? Hello, good afternoon, or good evening, should I say. I thought today what we would do is um, speak to Lloyd Stevenson Photography and hope that you guys will join in and have any questions that you have for photographers or videographers, especially when you're thinking about um, booking us in for your, for your wedding. Or maybe you have any questions that you want to ask us now um, and we can give you some advice. And come along for the ride, grab a coffee, um, and join in the convo. So we're going to introduce Lloyd Stevenson Photography. Hi, Lloyd. What an intro, my man. That's brilliant. All right, how are you getting on, mate? You all right? Yeah, very well, thanks, Paul. Paul, yeah. Yeah, this good, would be good. awesome. Coming, obviously, with the, with the plans and so forth, so it's nice to put it into motion, isn't it? It is. I thought as well it's, it's good because sometimes, as you know, when a lot of people are, are booking in their photographer, videographer, they've got a lot of questions. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think sometimes it's nice for them to do it behind a screen and then that way they're really listening to, to us and giving you know some kind of expertise uh, opinion um, yeah. and probably hopefully maybe some missing some of the pitfalls of, of booking a photographer and, and videographer so what, what I'm going to do Lloyd if it's okay with you is I'm going to actually 
show a bit of your your work, if that's okay. Yeah, of course, Paul. Um, and then what we can do is go through some of the photos and stuff, and you can tell us a little bit about yourself um, and you know what you've what you've got planned for for this year. Perfect. 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 Okay, I'll just put this on for everybody to to have a look at. Brilliant. So that's some awesome photography there, Lloyd. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It's really nice to see it on the big screen. I know. I think that sometimes it's great when you see it on the big screen. I know a lot of people look at photographs and all that now on their phones. Yeah. So to, to see it on like the big screen, it's just it's just nicer. Um, oh, yeah. Plus, I love I love your style and your colours. Um, Thank you. So what we'll do, um, I think, first and foremost, is if you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into photography. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm 43 years old now. Uh, I was th I've always been keen into photography, not professional level. As I was growing up, I was always taking photos and I was also buying hard drives, storing them. This is going as far back as just the the wee, uh, the kind of wee budget cameras, the kind of family cameras, if you like. Um, yeah, yeah. Exporting them and then keeping them, renaming them as like family and events and so forth. And then and it got to a level where the composition was there and I wanted to learn more about it. So about about taking create photos and and fast shutter speed, like catching fast moving things, stuff like that. And uh, and I'm really people oriented. I did my first wedding um, and never looked back since. Yeah, that was that was so I've done it full time since 2019. So where was your first wedding? My first wedding was. Oh, the Gilly Do in Edinburgh. And was it somebody you knew, or yeah, was it? It was, a, it was a second shooter for. So that was before then. That was for David Loudon, a really good guy. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he kind of showed me the ropes, and then and then I kind of just went on my own and kind of winged it. <laughs> it's funny. No, it's, it's, it's all came really well. A lot, of, a lot of practice. I think a lot of photographers are just, once they find, once they're happy. They they feel like they'll just go out and do a job. But I just, I just feel like everywhere, everywhere, and every year I want to just keep getting better, better with light and composition, the whole the whole shooting match. And it's uh, yeah. yeah, and 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 I think it, it shows that looking back over the years. I think it's funny because like when I first started, um, I mean I was as, as I tell all my bride and grooms um, usually at the Zoom call is I was an estate agent for for twenty odd year. Yeah. And, um, I had a good friend of mine, um, Dawn. She's actually my hairdresser. And, right, right. Uh, she, she'd asked me um, if I would do her her daughter's wedding, mm -hmm. and I kept saying, "No, nah, you know, I, I don't, I don't do weddings. You know, I, I film property, but I've never done weddings before." And yeah. Dawn had said to me, "She said, well, look, Paul, I'd, you know, we're not really looking for a videographer. So if you come along, just just film what you can." And to cut a long story short, I went out and I remember doing the, I remember doing it. And yeah. coming back, and what I did was, I looked at all, like the videographers in in Scotland, and I started looking for the field, like the American market, and how the Americans did wedding films. And yeah. I was more probably struck in awe with the American side of things and how, yeah, how they did it. Yeah. Um, and I remember editing the the wedding film, and then coming back, and then getting Dawn in with her daughters to have a look at it. And yeah. I remember talking to them and I was going through that on the screen and saying, oh, yeah, that was really nice. And then I turn around and, and they're crying. Yeah, and, yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, the, the satisfaction that gave me from, from that yeah. moment on. That's, um, that's about the reaction, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was producing something that you know that they're going to keep forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's such an emotional attachment to their photos and their video. Um, and that that really strived for me to to make sure that you know I got um, better at my craft. Yeah, and I knew from that moment on it was something I really wanted wanted to do. 
Yeah, I think you've still got that that American vibe in your in your work, which is amazing because because you don't see that around here. Yeah, I, I think um, for me, it's always, it's always about trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to think, you know, if, I, if I'm putting a story together and I give it to them in their wedding trailer or their wedding film, it just flows nicely from throughout the day. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a lot of my a lot of my wedding films is like storytelling. It's to, it's to tell the story of that individual because you know yourself. Every every wedding's unique. Every wedding film is is different. Every couple are different. Uh huh. You know. Exactly. Um. So yeah. So I, I think for me it was it was trying to make sure that I produced something like yourself that the clients were going to cherish and love forever and it didn't matter if they looked at them today or they'll look at it at 10 years further down the line they'll yeah. hopefully get that same kind of feeling as they got the very first time that they looked at them. yeah yeah and of course it'll need to withstand the test of time which is uh which is hard to do yeah it's, yeah uh, i think especially yeah. sorry lloyd i think as you say especially as when it comes to um probably like yourself like your edits you know color correction you know color grading yes. and trying to make sure that that stands the test of time. Yeah. So definitely. that it doesn't matter what screen they see on, when they keep looking back, the colours are through. Um, so they're not seeing something like a colour shift from one screen to, to the next. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. So I thought what we would discuss is, you know, if I if, if a couple approach you to, to book their wedding, um, if you tell us what your procedure is, you know, what, what the beginning to, to the end is. Yeah, sure. Well, if I, if I hear from a couple... Um, I email them back. Uh, usually they ask prices. I forward them a website with a price package, and then uh, if they're key, if I'm free on their date, we'll ask them what their date is, uh, which venue, and uh, and I like to organise a FaceTime, which is a kind of face to face similar to this, and you can they can kind of get a vibe off you, um, and a lot of the but a lot of the time they just want to get you booked in. Then I feel. Um, if they're oh great, love your work, glad you're free on our date, get you booked in, and then if that's the way they want to go, I wait till like about a month before when the ideas are all fresh. So then when we have a FaceTime, we can like go over kind of all the all the kind of plans and so forth, and maybe ideas that we've not used before. Um, and how do how do you find that people book you? Is it through like recommendation? Like a lot of my stuff is like recommendations. A lot of people that you know if I've done weddings for. Uh -huh. um, maybe the bridesmaid is getting married or, you know, I maybe get a message saying, you know, you did my sister's wedding or you did my brother's wedding. Really liked yeah. what you've seen and, and try and book you in that way. Yeah, I, I love that because when they do it that way, they've seen, I was speaking to a couple this week and I did their friend's wedding and uh, they worked together. And they, they, when I spoke, I did a FaceTime with them the other night. She says, oh, we've been talking about you all week and so forth. So so they know the way I work and they, they were really looking for someone who was fun and on the day. I'm a, I'm quite a laugh, I reckon. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, rather than one of those old school just straight <laughs> guys, you know, just, just the fun stuff. It's just having a good crack with them. Uh, they'll joke, and and it definitely helps. It makes them feel, uh, it makes them feel at ease. And also, it's it's a great day because so, some of the people yeah. that I've shot at their weddings now we're really good pals, and it's that's the way it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's um, I was the same. I was at a wedding and um, it was a shame the br the bride was hungry and I kept going on about Bucks Bar in Glasgow. Yeah, uh, yeah. she knows who she is. And then um, I, was, <laughs> I, I was like, I kept saying, "Oh, you know that chicken burger at Bucks Bar." And she's like, "Paul, stop it! I'm starving." But yeah. it, was, it, it it helped, you know, ease our nerves, and we just got talking about everything and anything and talking about food. And I think you're right. I think sometimes you tend to find if. If the couple are really having a laugh, it just makes it makes our day so much easier um, yeah. as well because it feels like we're just going along and having a, a great time. With, we're basically friends that we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, but definitely. I also think it makes the bride and groom feel so much more easier, which I think comes across on their photos and their videos. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, definitely. And, and, I think, and of course, suppliers working well together. Like when we work together, it's just perfect. It's all smooth running. We know how each other work. Um, and and it's just a laugh. It's great. Yeah, it? I think I think that's really imperative. I think, as you say, uh, you know, because we we've been doing this now, you know, for a good few years, uh -huh. um, and we know how each other work. I'm always respectful of photographers and know that they've got a get 
a job yeah. done. You know, that they're there just as much as we are um, for the bride and groom. But I think if you have that kind of rapport with your photographer or a videographer and you can start bouncing ideas off of each other, yeah, yeah, definitely. everybody's wins. There's, there's no losers in that, um, if that makes sense. You know, it's yeah. not like um, I'm holding back, you know, creative ideas from the photographer. It's like we're actually bouncing off each other and the bride and groom can see that we're having a laugh. They're having a laugh. And the fact that we can bounce ideas, everybody, uh, for me, I think everybody wins in that scenario. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm look, I'm really looking forward to this one in a couple of weeks. I'm hoping for a bit of behind-the-scenes footage, if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kirsten, how you doing? Um, Kirsten um, said she would get married every year if she could afford it. Oh, there's Kirsten. Just, Hi, Kirsten, how are you? Just to see the bromance. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, Kirsten, Kirsten, I was Kirsten's photographer. Thanks for yeah. trying, Kirsten. And uh, she tried to get you, didn't she? She did. Unfortunately, I was I was booked. I was gutted because um, Kirsten has re recommended me to a few a few people, and right. um, I was gutted. I seen her at one wedding, um, which was a really nice wedding in Edsall, and um, I managed to give her a hug then and say thanks so much. I, I was like, any more, I'll have to start paying you, Kirsten, for recommending us. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kirsten. <laughs> yeah. oh, I remember. So, yeah, we, we... so Kirsten, we went to we went to gardens. At... I can't remember the name of the gardens, Kirsten will fill you in. So it was beautiful. There was always all these beautiful colours. And on our way back to the venue, uh, we seen this field and it was just like purple, purple, a purple field. I don't know what it was. It turned out it was it was a uh, uh, thistle. <laughs> I was gonna say heather, but no. <laughs> <laughs> that we got the minute. It was so nice. You just the purple with the blue sky. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It, it's so it's so nice to get like venues or places that like that where it it gives you a lot of creativity. Definitely, definitely, yeah. So have you got have you got like a you know, does, is it a, a venue that sticks out in your mind or you know, do you have multiple venues that you really enjoy going to? I've I've got there's one that's close to me, which is probably my favourite. Is just just the amount of the amount of grounds. So different ideas. You like you probably worked there fifty times, and no, no other like the ceremony room is just iconic. It's like kind of old school, kind of lovely wood. Um, and uh, but I other other than that room itself, it's just you. You can go up the back. You can go down the front. There's a there's a pond down the front. There's a field up the back. There's there's a uh, there's steps there's hi it's just 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 pretty much endless um, ah, it's, it's so good when you get there. that yeah yeah so that's Inglewood. that's absolutely beautiful but there's a there's a lot of good venues not not even just close to me around the, the whole barn wed wedding thing is a massive deal now isn't it yeah yeah i and i find that I, I, yeah i find the, the castles and the barns um give you so much opportunity to to go in and around the grounds for for, yeah. for different feels. Um, you know, if you want something more atmospheric, you know, you, you may be only a five minute, five minute drive away, you know. Um yeah. I'm just reading Kirsten's message there. We have to stop at the field on the way back to the hall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she said it's her favorite photo. Thank you, darling. I hope you're both well. Yeah. Give it a share for us, Kirsten, if you don't mind. <laughs> give, it, give it a cheer, yeah. Let's get yeah. get stuck in. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think for me, it's um a lot of the venues. We're, we're very fortunate on our doorstep that you know, I'm based in, of course, you know, near near Montrose. So for me to get to Glasgow is like two hours drive, two and a half hours. Yeah. To go north of Aberdeen's like an hour and a half, two hours. So geographically. If you go along the east down to Glasgow and stuff, you know you're a couple of hours away from some fantastic, awesome scenery. Yeah. Um, you know, so if if what we'll do is we'll also discuss in regards to if a couple are thinking about booking a photographer and videographer, um, I would like to give my my probably view on what to look out for, or what to look for in your phot photog um, videographer. What yeah. what what would you recommend that you know if you were booking a photographer what would you recommend it the, the look for uh first of all i'd probably go by the quality of their work if if because you've got so many styles you've obviously got your dark and moody you've got your light and airy which are two total so one's super light one's super dark and you've probably got like myself in the middle which is really color colorful though um 
and I think, yeah, I, years ago I tried the whole dark thing, and I was like, I was like, that looks lovely, but it's not me. So you know, if you're in it for the long run, I, I was like, you know, my heart really wasn't in it, although it did look really nice, and no, and I kind of the light and airy thing was never really. That's just kind of, yeah, just too whitey and bluey, too like kind of sky blue everywhere kind of thing. Uh, if you get me, and I just kind of met in the middle, probably. TTL, which is true to life, um, but with a wee kick on it, with obviously rich colours, um, yeah, the kind of pop. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think if couples are deciding on who to book, um, for me, it's it's a couple of things. One is, of course, as we discussed, like the recommendations. You know, if if somebody's yeah. recommended you to somebody, I think that's half your battle. Uh -huh. Because if a bride and groom have recommended a photographer, or a videographer, they've worked with them for the whole day. Mm -hmm. And they've seen the final product of what they've produced. That's it, yeah. yeah. So I think for me, probably I would say a, a huge part of it is if you can get a recommendation, then that, that's that's half your battle. And of course, going on their websites and seeing the style. Um, I try and work with different multiple styles. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on, of course, Scotland has you know different weather. It can it can fluctuate from sunny in the morning till snow at night. You know, so. Yeah. I try and change my colour grading or my style depending also on the atmospheric yeah, side of it. Um, and of course, you've got your you've got your fast moving, which I love, like the high energy stuff, and you've also got your slow and romantic, which is equally as lovely. Um, and I suppose it's your up to you to gauge that. I think you're, I think you're so. you, you posted last because of the, the story, you kept it lovely. But your one before that was all superb transitions and like Climbing up buildings and shooting along walls and and like the wee girl with the emojis coming out of our yeah computer. yeah that, that was absolutely world class yeah I, I'm I seeing your, so. your message there Kirsten thank you my darling much love darling thank you Kirsten um, yeah I think I think you're right I think for me it's um I think I'll give you an instance I had a couple from America and um, that came over uh -huh. and they spent a huge amount of money on the flowers alone um. So for me, I didn't really change the colours. I, I probably bolded them a little bit. Um, yeah. But what I didn't do was change the colours um, because I knew that they'd gone to a great expense for these bold reds and what have you, that uh -huh. I knew that if I changed that on the wedding film, mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have been happy because that wasn't the true representation of the flowers. Yeah. Um, so I'm very careful, as you say, I, I try and read the room um, and because I do my own edits, because whatever I'm filming, I edit. I know how it felt that day, if that makes sense. You know yourself. We, we can go to weddings where the the couple are, you know, completely emotional. And, and it's a, a really emotional day. You know, th there might be uh, different factors taken into play where it's, it's completely emotional. Um, and then we maybe go to the next wedding where it's all fun and laughter. There's not a tear shed, but everybody's just having one big party. So I try and like to think, you know, that I try and edit in such a way that it it mirrors how the day was. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you're right. I think you know sometimes I'll do maybe fast transitions if it was a fast paced day, um, but slow things completely down. Um, yeah. If if I feel that it wasn't that kind of high energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for for that day. So you're right. I think. Um, for me, when you're choosing your, your videographer, photographer, I think if you look at different weddings, not just one, you know, wedding photographs, but maybe look at five or six. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, on your website, you've got 100, 200, 300 galleries where you can just, so so all they need to do is just check out, check out your website and spend time on it. The amount of people that I send in my page, my, my website, and they can, they can look back my photos as many years as they want on my on my page and they're also on the website plus more um and rather than spend time on their website they, they just shoot back in touch with you and, and ask you questions that are on the website but that, i'm totally fine with that i've got a mate yeah. who does who prefers to do an automated service and i was like i, I prefer the hands-on service because it feels yeah. personal and it's it's uh you kind of build a bond even from then don't you definitely as you say i mean i had um I th I, we, I, we did the wedding to to together and um, they had the photograph of when they first met. And oh, so yeah. what I want to do, yeah. So what I want to do is tell that story of 
the photograph right through to the end when they left it next to the lakeside. Yeah, yeah. As part of the story of them, you know, that very first photograph that they'd taken and leaving it at the end of the film. So it just it just told that kind of story through throughout. Yeah. Um so yeah, for me, as you say, I think that I think that's key when couples are deciding is you know, look at look at websites. Really important that you look at websites. Um, reviews. I think reviews are really important if you can get reviews as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got reviews on our Facebook page, and I think for me that's really important that you can actually look at genuine reviews. Yeah. And definitely. see what 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 people are saying. Mm -hmm. And of course, if uh, the first thing I ask is, do you have a videographer? And if they say no. It's yourself I always recommend because I know they're guaranteed to get quality work, um, and uh, there there are there are definitely levels, and and you know I mean it's it's uh, you want you want to provide the highest possible service. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, uh, and I'm the same. You know, like, like yourself, like with photography and what have you. Um, if anybody's asking for recommendations, I know who to recommend because I know that they're going to get the quality service, um, mm -hmm. and it's not going to fall back on me. That they're going to say, well, you you promoted this photographer, and you know I'm not happy with yeah definitely. the the service that I've I've got, you know. Um, so for the timeline, I mean, we'll discuss timelines of the day. What what bridal groom should expect? Um, I'm going to assume, from my perspective, that they've got us for bridal prep up to you know a couple of additional dances in the evening. So what time would you usually turn up? Well, I used to go two hours before ceremony, but now I go three hours before. Um, the reason for that is I don't want to, to, there to be any rushing about. And see see if their, their bridal prep is not at the wedding venue, I'll even go earlier than three hours. Just because I know it's an early start, but if I want to, if I get an idea about taking the dress outside and hanging it somewhere crazy, um, you can do it with no with no kind of timeline stress. Um, and also, also you can enjoy the day. I think a bit more bec because you're not rushing about. And uh, the, and a, a tip I give to brides is to make sure they're ready before before they should be ready, just so you can have your 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 reveal with the bridesmaids and your reveal with dad. But then those five minutes, just kind of on your own, it's the first time you've had your dress on in front of your photographer. Just some really nice photos, photos next to a window, looking out a window, kind of stuff like that. Um, just yeah, and uh, and there's nothing worse than a bride getting ready, hugs dad. Right, okay, we need to go. Doing walking down the aisle, rushed, I stressed. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I, I usually try and say that to brides as well. Is <clears throat> you know, if the ceremony is say at one o'clock, we'll probably be there between ten, quarter past ten, so we can start filming like the dress, the yeah. accessories. You know, if Dylan was is with me, he'll you know film the bridesmaids, the hair, the makeup, and all that kind of stuff, and that gives us plenty of time um, to get the kind of footage that we need, but also make sure that we're spending time with the dress, the accessories. It's all these little things you know as well that yeah. you know we end up forgetting. Mm -hmm. You know, the bride will forget these kind of little things unless they're, they're in a drawer somewhere that they'll pull out. But yeah. sometimes I've had brides that will come back to me and say, "God, I totally forgot about these little things that I'd." I'd gotten yeah, and the day yeah. was so crazy. So we're usually there, say, between 10, quarter past 10, start getting all these little bits filmed. And like yourself, you know, the ceremony is at one o'clock. If they're doing a dress reveal with Dad, we always turn around and say, look, you know, if the ceremony is at one, you really want to have done your dress reveal no later than, you know, half past 12. Yeah. Because yeah. That, like way, that. Yeah, that, that way, yeah, that way they they get that kind of reaction from Dad, but they also get to spend a bit of time with Dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. We will then capture some stuff with, with Dad, but then we'll head off and start setting up mics and the, the ceremony and all that. But it also leaves time, I think, for you as the photographer to get more pictures of the bride with her dad, the bridesmaids, and, as I say, like on her dress completely by herself and what have you. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think sometimes the difficulty is, it's like what you say, you know, if, if the makeup artists um, or hairdressers run over ever so slightly, and it could be because, you know, the, the, there's so many to you know, maybe so many bridesmaids and we always know that, you know, things always don't run on time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, as you say, if, if you end up like, you know, you're hugging dad um, and then all of a sudden you're you're running down to the ceremony, it's that kind of little five or ten minutes you'd have just liked to spend yeah. with dad by yourself or your bridesmaids to have a little drink and just soak in the whole atmosphere of having your dress yeah. on. That yeah. This is what you've been building up to. It's almost like a key point of the day, isn't it? 
because you're, you're so emotional, usually a wee tear, hugging dad, and then it's basically whisked in the aisle, and it's like it's like panic stations for them because because they're still kind of thinking that you know there's, it's, it's all just happening too fast that little bit. The the last yeah. hour of a wet, the last hour of bridal prep is absolutely crazy, isn't it? It is, it is, and it's a shame, as you say, because we want we want the bride to enjoy it. We want the bride to be fairly relaxed. So we always try and say to the bride, um, if you can try and be ready, if you're especially if you're doing a dress reveal to a family member, um, or any family member or the bridesmaids, to so try and at least do that and give yourself at least another twenty minutes, twenty five minutes before you have to either head off or go down to to the ceremony. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then once once we have done that, once like probably like yourself, you know, once um, bridal prep's been done, the ceremony's taken place. We have a multi camera, as you know, we have a multi camera set up with with professional mics, uh-huh. um, so we we know that all that's in place. And then we try and make sure we stay out your way, um, so that you can get the shots that you need. Yeah, I think I think for me it's uh, it's a lot of it's up to the bride and groom. For for me, it's. I know exactly where I need to be because I, I want to catch every angle possible. So, so you know the venue. You want to hit every angle um, over each shoulder from above if you can, or or straight on, or or wherever it may be. Just just trying to find angles and different levels as well. But a lot of it is down to the bride and groom again. If if they can, if they're comfortable, I say it to every couple. The more eye contact you make when you're seeing your vows, the better your pictures will be because there's. If if you're getting all these angles and then the bride's looking up here and then the groom is looking down here, they're a bit nervous. It's it's kind of it's like it's it's like real moments when they're looking at each other, isn't it? It's like a connection that I feel. And it all does. This, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's probably where I'm more fortunate as a yeah. videographer than you are as a photographer, because that kind of little snippet in time, if they're if you know if he's looking into the distance, that mm. that's that's caught like that. For me, the movement isn't so bad. Uh-huh. Um, if that makes sense. And because I've got a multi-camera setup, um, I always say to photographers, look, if you stand in one, you know, not always stand in front of a camera, but if you move ever so slightly um, away from the cameras or you walk past the camera, don't worry about it because we can always switch yeah. to camera B or C or, or whatever. Um, so we are very fortunate like that. We also know that, you know, if the, the less cameras we have, if you as a photographer stand in front of the camera, well, we could lose that first kiss or... Yeah. Or whatever. I tell you, I tell you what I do, um, and I sometimes forget to, to say this to bride and grooms is, I always think um, for a bride and groom is when they give that first kiss, I always say try and count to three. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I had that in my notes today to mention that. Yeah, did you? yeah. Because because you can get it cropped in and wider. Um, whereas if it's sometimes sometimes I've had to say, can you kiss again? Because they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th- I always and try and say, and also to close their eyes. Every, yeah, every time I'm yeah. on the couch, I was like, and have a wee kiss, close your eyes. But sometimes you say, a wee kiss, the interpret is this. I, li- I like the kind of Homer Simpson style where it's, Mwah. yeah, yeah. I always say, I always try and say to, to brides and grooms, so there's a good tip for the, the brides and grooms to be is if you, when you're doing your first kiss, always count to three. Yeah. And then that way, for us, we could slow things down so it looks, you know, more more intimate. And for yeah. the photographer, you you're getting that that perfect Definitely. first first kiss. Yeah, and and also also if if their arms are dangling, I'm like I'm just like get all over each other, like a moment of passion, like hold each other as well. It just adds so much more to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's a shame because because all these brides and grooms they they generally just do it once, but when you when you see it. A hundred times over, you can you, you know you, you you can give them wee pointers which can add so much into their. I was saying last night it, it could make their photos, but it could also make their video look so much better as well, couldn't it? I think I think I think you're spot on. I, th- I think yeah you, you hit the nail on the head there. Is because we 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 film so many weddings and you photograph so many weddings, you know your photographer and videographer can probably give you the best tips of the day yeah. because we see it all the time. And we can say to the bride and groom, listen, give, give each other that three-second kiss at the altar. You know, hold that three-second kiss um, or look at each other's eyes or, or, you know. I always try and say to bride and grooms is sometimes the best time you will have with each other is when you are one-to-one with each other on the day. Yeah. 
Um, you know yourself, but after the ceremony, when you go and mingle with your guests, you're talking, everybody wants to take pictures with you, everybody wants to talk to you, and quite rightly so, it's your, it's your wedding day. Yeah, yeah. But I've also found after the event, when you were spoken to brides or grooms after, you know, sometimes they'll say, do you know something, Paul, that that five or ten minutes where we were taken away with you and the photographer for their one-to-one shots was one of some of the best times of, yeah. of the day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Grab yourself a drink. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I think for you, as you say, like like ourselves, you know, once once the ceremonies, um, and you might have a different take on this, but I'm I feel that you know after the ceremony, if you take the the couple away, um, for their one to one shots, it gives them that unique time to be by themselves because they yeah, haven't seen yeah. each other all morning. That that they've been waiting to see each other. Um, uh, and I, know I think what, you. Yeah. It, well, formal, like like I said, with the way I always do it is ceremony. Try and get everyone outside, big big group shot, and try and not everyone let everyone disappear, so we can just bang through those. It's it, but because that's an important part of the day. That that those family formals need to be done. And for me, if we can just batter through them as quick as we can, and then move on, it gives us loads of time with our kids if they've got them, and as as a couple. But yeah, yeah, I, I like your way as well. Definitely. Yeah, I think I think as, as you say, I am. Um... Uh, there's probably both arguments for taking them away straight away and uh, letting them enjoy just each other by themselves because they're at that excited stage because yeah. it's just that kind of privacy. But I totally understand, like, as you say, I mean, we need to film the guests mingling, having a nice time because, yeah. again, that's what bride and grooms want to see in their wedding film. They want to see, um, you know, they want to see the, the their family members laughing, joking, yeah. having yeah. a drink. So we need to film that kind of stuff as yeah. well. Um, yeah. But for us, as you know, for our storytelling, the, the critical one-to-ones is when you take them away just by themselves. Yeah. Um, and I don't know about you, but for me, it's a bit of a, like um, safe shots. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, so if we get the kind yeah, of one-to-ones because, and we know we've because, got them. Yeah, because obviously with the Scottish weather, it, like, I, like a couple before, I was like, come on, let's just do it. They're like, oh, we'll do it in 10 minutes. I was like, it could be raining in 10 minutes. So we just went out, got five minutes, and the, it's it's amazing the amount of work you can get done in five minutes uh just with a couple of poses and me changing that like angle so so we've got one backdrop here then i come around the back and then we've got a total different backdrop and that that almost saved the day uh because it was lashing down after that but later on yeah. we got out as well which was which i was trying to encourage the couple to do as well yeah yeah um and for speeches in regards to the speeches um uh, again we have a multi-camera setup for the speeches and everybody gets mic'd up um and again for yourself i you know i see you you know like a butterfly fluttering yeah from yeah. left to right and all that to get all the kind of nice shots for the speeches that's it yeah it's all about, it's all about catching moments isn't it yeah yeah it's gonna yeah. get the structure then target obviously the speaker and the person they're referring to as well but generally is the bride or the groom it's uh, but it's a nice touch. It's like you like you say once you've done it a hundred times over, it's uh, you know exactly. And and generally, the better the speech, the the more the laughs, isn't it? Which is yeah, nice. yes. And yeah. you get the kind of nice moments of the guests laughing and joking and and, and what have you. Um, I'm going to look at some of your photographs if that's, if that's okay, Lloyd. Sure, yeah. Um, and you could tell us, you know, how how you did it because some of the, the shots are cracking here. So I'm going to do this one first. Um. I don't know if it's at a wedding or maybe it was at a, an engagement. Um, so it's this one here. Yeah, that was a, that was a couple's pre-wedding shoot. Um, that was obviously at Fourth Road Bridge, South Queen's Ferry. Um, they wanted, they were getting married. Um, it's actually my next door neighbour's brother. They're, they're absolutely lovely. Um, and uh, this, was, this was just at the end. Uh, we'd already been down this way, but just with the just with the mood it was getting really dark that was just one flash it was a, an ad 200 which is a really powerful flash um generally when when there's a lot of light behind the subject which there is there um you need to light them up to separate them or they'll just be kind of silhouette like yeah uh, and that was just a nice it's a beautiful pose. photo with the bridge yeah, the, um the composition there is just absolutely spot on uh, see the way they're in between the posts perfectly yeah, yeah, it's it's a that one really stuck out in my mind that photograph. Um, yeah, and we, and we because went because of the lines. For, sorry, we went back there for their wedding pictures as well, and got very similar. There was one the other side of the water just over like twenty paces to the left with a boat in the background, which was beautiful as well. Um, 
but it rained it rained we had two we had a two-hour window so it was a small wedding they had and uh and then they, they went to two hours of photos and it was lashing down in south queen's ferry miles away from our car just like a couple of flashes one over each shoulder and a tripod two cameras <laughs> and, they had an umbrella. and we stopped for a coffee and we grabbed we grabbed the wedding dress and just wrung it out but no there a lot of the photos 90 percent of the photos it didn't even look like it was raining because there was no. a lot of Photoshop done um, because I knew they wanted a, a change skies around. I, I try not to do all that now, but just to give it just, just as a different variation. Yeah. So that, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful lot. photograph. Thanks, um, and, that, and it's that good because uh, that was featured on MagMod, that photo. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Which is a, which is a, this is the company I use for all the, the kind of soft bits to put on your flashes. Ah, your, right. Okay. Your grids and, Obviously, it's just just all magnets, but it's all it all helps shape light. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a it's a beautiful photo, and I think we're, we're lucky because a lot of the times, you know, I'll say to brides and grooms, you know, of course, the Scottish weather can be so unpredictable. Um, yeah. Do you want to go out? We never force a couple to go out. You know, if it's of course, if it's you know horizontal rain, then we don't want to go out. You know, because yeah. equipment you know can get wet and destroyed and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's nice when couples try and go out for the even five minutes for that kind of atmospheric kissing in the rain shot. Yeah, um, yeah get that umbrella up, get it whisked away, get it back up to them. <laughs> you know? definitely, um, definitely. I think it makes I think that makes a difference, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree totally. I, I love a rain shot, especially in the dark. Um, yeah, yeah, I've uh, yeah, I, I did one. I did my first one a couple of years back, two three two three years ago. Um, and it involves like two or three flashes. To, to backlight the rain so anything translucent right. will will it's, it's almost like a kind of star wars effect ah nice one that's uh, um memories by movie all right how you doing memories by movie oh there um, you are how you doing for coming in how you doing my um, if anybody's got any questions you know if, if any brides or grooms or you know brides to be have got any questions please don't hesitate to, to jump in and, and we'll try and answer any questions that you've got what we'll do as well is I'm going to call up another one of Lloyd's. This this one I, I absolutely love, Lloyd. And um, you can tell us about this one. Oh yeah, yeah. That was uh, my good friend Ewan's daughter's wedding. Ewan's uh, Ewan's been a photographer for twenty years, and I got him into weddings. He's he's been he's been a second shooter for me quite a lot. So this was his his beautiful daughter, and uh, and I really wanted to, the the sky was lovely, and we. We've seen all these uh what are they? Daffodils. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was so. You you took it. <laughs> I just saw <laughs> these plants. <laughs> so that was at Rufflets in St Andrews. That was my first time there. That's that was a cracking venue. Outdoor ceremony when we went away to St Andrews Beach for the couple photos, then came back to the grounds and so I was lying on my back with a 15 mil uh, lens on, which is super wide, pointing straight up. And so I had I had three uh, of those flowers <laughs> <laughs> around my lens. I had two people holding them, so it looked like I was in the ground. And uh, Lauren, that was it. It was Lauren, and she reached for one, and it was just I was like, look at it and smile. Just just a lovely. There was quite a bit oh, of flash. a and fall. Because same again, there was a lot of light behind her, so I was trying to make her pop. And then this one here. I see that, Alan. We'll get around to that shortly, my man. Definitely. Hope you're well, buddy. What we'll do as well is um, we'll get around to that, Alan, mate. Yep. Yeah. Um, this one here. Um, again, I absolutely love this this photo. Um, lovely, lovely. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that was just a perfect time of night. We were. We were, that was uh, that was the start of January. Um, the couple were getting married in Falkirk in the registry office, and they were coming out. It was like it was a it was like a twilight wedding, four o'clock wedding, and uh, they said when we come out, we'll just get some photos outside in Falkirk Town Centre. And it was me that said to them, I said, "Come on, let's go to the Kelpies. It's five minutes. There's nothing. There's nothing really fancy about a town centre kind of with shops everywhere." So we headed out there and. The, the staff at the Kelpies were great because they had shut up, but they the couple phoned in advance. So they kind of put the, you know, like one of those timed barriers that go down so you can drive through. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, and we, we shot down. We had a, I had an assistant with the, the driver that was driving them. Uh, he held a couple of flashes for me um, and a light stand and a tripod. I didn't even set up the tripod. Hello, son. You okay? Couldn't see home. So uh, uh, it, it turned out it was, uh, we were there five minutes and we, we had absolute nails that and some amazing shots. So that's, it was that's a beautiful was, skyline, uh, that. Yeah, yeah, perfect time of night. It was, it was like literally five minutes before it got dark, and and that I love that time of night because the, the clouds just pop so much, um, and and they've got so many different photos to that because the, the kelpies obviously change from turquoise to red to purple, so so I could just keep popping away. Yeah, this, this one here as well with the kelpies. Um, yeah, there you go. That, yeah. Again, with, with with the backlight to them, it's it's just. Stunning yeah, photo yeah, well, that, was, that was the sun popping through, and the same again. This was just before we left. I photoshopped out all the all the pylons in the background, right? Um, which is, I love the kelpies, but see the pylons. The for me, it's like it's almost like mm, they need to go. So I think like, with the pylons would distract the eye. I think yeah. the fact that you know with the pylons taken away, it's just them and. The kelpies are just are just absolutely stunning, and of course this one I like this one because it's it's for me it's it's clean. It's, yeah, um, yeah. That's that's it's, that's almost light in the area, isn't it? Yeah, I really really like that photograph. Yeah, um, it's yeah. it's got rich colours as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I really I really that. like just that one. See, see white ceilings, white walls. It's so easy just with, with flash photography. Um, just bounce it off the ceiling, and the, the whole room acts as a a diffuser. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely stunning, and this one as well. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was a tricky shot because the 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 light behind uh, that was Beth. She she was absolutely beautiful. She she absolutely smashed it. Um, that was Inglewood, and it was out, and then and then I was I was trying to get the shot, but I had a my, my most powerful flash trying to come from from like three o'clock. Um, yeah. And just because there was so much light behind him, and then it was that 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 took a lot of editing as well. Because, but but obviously that's the the power of editing. It's uh, bring all the colours to life. And I think you're right. I think without the editing and without yeah. the light in there, um, yeah. she oh. would, you know she would have been completely dark. Yeah, she, she um, was just silhouette. Yeah, yeah, basically completely dark. But the fact that you know she is so bright and the sky isn't overblown, you can tell that took an edit. You know, There's you, you can tell that's not just. Hello, um, Claire. We, we've got we've got some of Claire's photos in here as well, haven't we? Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, um, the couple we've we've got uh, Claire and Pete with the sparkler, and we've also got the the confetti the the smoke grenades. Ah, you got them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Claire there. Hope you're well, Claire. What we'll do as well is we'll look at this one. Oh yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. That Again, was a, I really like that one. I like the one that they're, they're driving away and they've got their hands in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was class. That was class. That was a that was a an MG BGT, I think it is, uh, an old school car. And that was I love going to that spot. That's that's uh, Demaya in the background. That's uh, that's about ten minutes from my house. And every time you go there, the colours are just different. The grass is a different color. Skies obviously changed, and and the hills are they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's a stunning, stunning, stunning photograph, Lloyd. Yeah, right. um, and this is probably one of my favorite ones here. Is this one here? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, that was uh, there was a bit of story to that one. That was uh, I was just about that was up in Loch Lomond. That was Jackie and Grant. We were. I was just about to leave, and I said to the couple, "I said, do you fancy going outside? It's raining, but we can get some really cool." So, uh, you know, like, we'll get something really magical, and uh, and they said no, they'd had enough. They're in party mode, which was fine. I'd stayed for half a dozen dances, and just as I was shooting off, I packed everything away, and they came and got me and said, "Right, come on, let's just do it." So I unpacked everything again, and we got a couple of guys to hold lights. That was a three light setup. The one behind them froze the froze the rain, and then one at forty five degrees over each of them to light their uh, up their faces. Um, same again, that photo went viral on Facebook and I got a lot of new followers off that, which was amazing. Really, really nice photograph. I really, yeah. really like that. Um, I see your message here. Thank you, Claire. Thanks very much, honey. Yeah, give it a share for us, guys. That's it. Thank you. 
And if anybody is to say, if anybody's got any questions <clears throat> before we, we call it night, please don't hesitate to, to drop us a message and we'll happily answer anything you've got. Even those that have maybe been married and maybe thinking, you know what, I've got other um, family members or, you know, that's going to get married, what, what would I suggest to them? We'll happily answer any questions. Um, so the other thing I was going to say, um, in fact, somebody asked that, you know, have you got any funny stories at weddings? Uh, there's so much fun going on at weddings that oh, the night of my brother's wedding that was an absolute hoot because we were we were absolute gaga and we're we're out taking photos in the dark and i think that was one of my first like really cool nighttime photos i think my my sister-in-law no sorry my my sister-in-law's sister was blowing a vape for smoke and then we had someone holding a flash, someone holding a torch, and, and it was all just it was all just proper off the cuff. But yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, oh, there's so many good stories. I usually, and and it's nice to see everyone just letting their hair down. I've got a horror story that I'd like to talk about. Um, no I've name. Only, yeah, <laughs> I was I was doing a wedding in Glasgow. So usually I try and push let's have a face time before just to go over everything but this this couple like no it's fine just turn up in the day so i turned up to the where they're doing the bridal prep and we did all that and then i was like right i'm going to shoot away i'll see you at the venue so i went to cottiers in glasgow you know the big church yeah 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 so i went there and i went inside parked up paid my parking you need to pay there went inside and they said uh and the room was all set up for night time i says what's happening here she says, "Oh, uh, they're only coming here after 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 the chapel." So I phoned the bride. I says, "What's happening?" He says, "You never told me we're going to a chapel." She says, "Oh yeah," and she, she gave me the postcode, and it was forty eight minutes away through the centre of Glasgow. So I get there just in time. They had to hold the bride back till I came in. So this 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 would have all been settled over an easy FaceTime, wouldn't it? Uh, but no, I think a couple. And yeah. when I got there. I had my two cameras set up. I was shooting away. And after about half an hour, I was like, I've got loads on that camera. I went to put it down on what I thought was a table. But it was a it was actually a tub, a bucket, full of holy water with a tablecloth over it. And as I put my camera down, it disappeared <laughs> into the holy water. Which was like, <laughs> I was, oh, I was. Uh, did, it get, did, did it get rude? Did it actually get wet? Did well, it go in? This was a five grand camera, right? So right in, it was like submerged, like three feet deep in water. So I was the 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 priest wasn't happy at all because I'm obviously diving. He wasn't into happy. <laughs> oh. I, I think I was cursed, but I was as soon as I got out. This bearing in mind, this was still it was just, this was still like two in the afternoon, and I had the rest of the day, and I was thinking to myself, how do I, obviously rice would be the best bet. But you know, I couldn't I couldn't have disappear if I went to go and get rice or anything. So so I dried it the best I could and the rest of the the couple were absolutely lovely. They were, they were like, oh no, it's no problem. They they left me a beautiful review. But when I went home that night, I just I just passed my house, went straight to Lidl's, bought like half a dozen bags of rice, and then I left everything, the flash, the lens, and the body, each each in their own rice for a week. And uh Everything worked apart for the flash after a week, and I was blown away. Is that right? Yeah, so I sold the camera the next next week. I was like, I need yeah. to do that. I, I think, not, um, that was, I, I uh, think for me, as you say, I think having that kind of Zoom call before the wedding yeah. is really, really imp important for me. It's really important because we, like yourself, you know, we need to get timelines. Um, we also need to know if there's anything specific they want to get filmed, or if there's anything specific that they, um, you know, any, anything that, you know, we need to document down. Yeah. Uh, like that, you know, they might have kids or they might have an elderly grandparents. Um, yeah. Anything that's, like that, that, you know. That's why I like to have a group photo list because the amount of time a couple come back to me and say, oh, did you get a photo with my gran? And I was like, see if you, generally our grand's kind of not outside too much. Eh? The grand's kind of just sitting, chilling. That, and if we've got a list, we can just stick to the list. Let's just barter through this top to bottom, then it's done. Yeah. And yeah. all the, like, aye, grands, granddads, they're, they're the, the important ones, aren't they, there as well? Um, and obviously the kids, they, they're kind of, you catch them. And how late do you usually stay? I mean, for ourselves, you know, 
we give the clients the option you we stay for the first dance or we can stay for more additional dances if we're doing a Kaylee or they're doing like a, a father daughter dance or a mother son dance or whatever. Do you yeah. have like certain timelines for yourself? Uh, to be honest, I used to kind of shoot away after the first three dances, but now, now I try and I, I stay until I feel I've got enough. Um, if that makes sense, and then after that, if I've if I've not got some night pictures, I also give them the option. But I don't I don't like to drag them away from their from their guests once the party started. But it's at the end of the day, it takes five minutes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think you're right. I think um, for for me, I I usually say to people, you know, before the drink flows too much, um, uh -huh. it's a case of. You know, we do the we do the dancing. We get everybody on the dance floor. You know, whether it's a Kaylee or everybody going mental, um, yeah. and we've got the footage. We've got everything that we need. Um, so yeah, I think I think for us. Um... Oh hi, Bruce. How you doing, hi, mate? Bruce. All right. How are you, pal? Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Yeah. yeah we, we can't we can't wait to do yours as well, um, Bruce with Allison. Um, we can't wait as well. We can't let, wait for that. Um, be, I tell you what, Bruce, it'll be, before you know it, it'll be like February 2025 in the blink of an eye. I know, I know, definitely. Bruce, you, you should watch this back again if you've just uh, tuned in. There's probably quite a good, uh, a few good tips for you. Not about the camera falling into water, Bruce. Um, I, I just, just missed that bit. That's the... <laughs> Fast forward that bit, Bruce. <laughs> I do, oh. but no, that's uh, no, you, you couldn't write it though, could you? No, and it, it, as Claire says, I mean, I think you know, somebody like Claire that turned around and says, You know, you managed to get my gran out, and I'll be forever grateful for that. I think sometimes that's that's the difference between having like a good photographer to an excellent photographer. They, they, we sort of like know the importance. Um, that's it, probably yeah. like yourself, Lloyd, when I'm filming, I always try and film in a way that what I would want to see 20 years down the line myself. Um, you know, that's that's really... Definitely, Bruce. Um, oh, that's that's really, really what I'm uh, after. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm after that kind of filming in the future. That that's when they look that's back, right, yeah. they think, I'm, I'm glad they got, you know, Paul got, you know, my gran. Or my, that's why in the Zoom call, it's really important for us to say, you know, mm. is there anybody specific you want filmed? Is there... Yeah. Um, is there like you know pets, children, all this kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm always conscious when there's elderly people there that, of course, you, you know, we try and film as much as we possibly can because these are people that you'd want to see five, ten, fifteen, twenty years down the line in your wedding film. Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. And and of course, you want to blow them away and give them don't not leave them to say, oh, it was great, but I didn't get. Whatever. Yeah. Aye. Yeah, and you know yourself, weddings can be extremely fast paced. Um, for us as as photographers and videographers, the the day can be stressful because timelines. If you know if timelines run out, you know if you all of a sudden if you are um, behind, you know if the bride and groom or, or the ceremonies ran behind or or if our things are running late, yeah. things can start happening at a completely rushed pace. But like as Claire says, you know. To know the importance to still take somebody out and spend that time, yeah, it's definitely. something that they'll never get back. Definitely. And for me, I know that you know couples always look at price. I mean, everybody has a, a budget that they that they work towards. But mm. I think sometimes that's the difference. Sometimes between photographers and videographers is, you know, what what are we try to get out of it for the client. You know, are we filming for filming's sake, or are we filming to try and make sure that you future proof. The scenes that you filmed for five, ten, fifteen years down the line, that look back and think, do you know what? I'm so glad they captured that um, photo. Yeah. Or I'm so glad they captured that footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a feel good factor. See when you when you catch him kind of magical, eh? it's it's uh, it's uh, aye, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks for that, Claire. Um, it's so nice to hear. Um, Speaking about brides running late, uh, Kirsten, I don't know if she's still, she wrote in the comments, I don't know if she's still here. She was 35 minutes late. <laughs> and we still got her, we that still got her in the purple field. <laughs> thistles. That's shocking, Kirsten. Um, <laughs> yeah. I should charge like a, a, a per minute rate 
of like fifty pen, fifty pound a minute every minute that you're late. Oh no, I know. <laughs> no, that was that was that was why it was a standing joke that we managed to get so much done on the on the couple front. The the whole the whole wedding party came away to this to this uh, to these grounds, which were like 15, 20 minutes away, to get like group foot shots, which was great. And for for um, I'm just having a look here for editing time. So we've now done the wedding. So me and you have been out to the wedding. We've basically totally destroyed it, Lloyd, by having a laugh. Right. Uh, <laughs> we've got all the footage. We've got all the photos. When would when would you, for photography wise, expect to turn around the the photos for the client? Yeah, yeah. Well, time wise for me, I'm I'm very slow, but I, I work fast. But I'm very slow, if that makes sense. Um. I take photos in the raw format, which is which is the which lets you edit them so much more, rather than just turning up with a with a phone and clicking a button, and that's called a JPEG. So you, you, you first of all, you need to upload them to your computer, and then you need to put your style on them, which is a, a style. It's like a preset. I've made a style which is which I've kind of been tweaking away over the years, and I do it to the first one, then multiply it to all of them. And then every but every one, obviously the lighting is completely different. Um, and obviously you need to crop, straighten, etc. Uh, white balance, temperature, all that comes into it. So, but before I do that, I go through it and delete the duffers. Because if it's a group shot of 10 people, I'll maybe take three of the same photo because someone will be blinking in one and maybe someone in another. But but sometimes, or most of the time, I can take their eyes off one picture and put it on the one from before, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, narrow it down and then start to work on them. Uh, I'm about 150 photos a day I can edit, which is which is slow. So I'm so I'm probably about 45 hours per per wedding after the 10 hour shift on the day. But so then at least you know that the clients are getting yeah something yeah. that's been individually um, edited. Yeah, you know yeah. It, it, it's been carefully crafted. Rather than you say a JPEG, something that's you know the the camera's basically produced, yeah, you know everything yeah. manual, you know automatically you just give it to them, you know by going in and doing your edits, um, mm. you can you can have a look at you know color temperature, white balance, all this kind of stuff, and yes. I'm I'm yeah. the same. Um, once I filmed it, because sometimes you know clients or not 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 couples, but sometimes you know um, guests might say, God, you know, you're only here for a day, you know, it's a day's work. I'm like, no, it's it's a week's work, you know. Today yeah, is yeah, only totally. collecting the information. Yeah. You know, it's it's filming today, but then I'll go home and then I have to then start looking at all the audio because for us, you know, we've got to use editing software for the audio for mics and make sure that it's, it's cleaned. Then we've got to make sure that we've got all the the sequences in place, and then we've got to make sure we try to tell a story. Then we've got to color grade, color correct. So we do all this kind of stuff, uh, which takes time. You know, yeah. we, we don't slice, uh, we don't just take shots and then slice it together and then just give it to the client. We try and tell the story. And then, of course, sometimes with the wedding film, that can take even longer. And without clients actually knowing, there could be hundreds of sequences within that film because yeah. the clips might only last two seconds before it switches to another clip and then another clip and so on and, and so on. Yeah. So for us, my time scale is for the wedding trailer, Within our contract, as we always say, um, the wedding trailers usually within two to four weeks. Right. Um, we always get it closer to the two weeks, uh -huh. um, but it gives us a little bit of leeway, especially in peak season, as you know, June, July, August, when you're when you're, you're doing quite a lot of weddings. Uh -huh. um, and then they get the full film usually within six to eight weeks. Uh -huh. um, and that's that you take on a limited number, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. We we take on limited numbers because we know that if we would either have to outsource our editing, mm -hmm. and I really don't want to do that because I I know how we discussed earlier how we felt. You know, the day went whether it was a a romantic day, whether it was an emotional day, whether it was a fun day. So I'm editing in that style, but for the couple. Um. So for us, as you say, it's it's time scale for us because we're on limited weddings is any more than what that we, we, we wouldn't be able to do or edit ourselves or we'd be having to go back to clients and say well your wedding film's not ready yet you're going to have to wait another two weeks or another four weeks yeah. um 
And I think that's 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 key. I think for us is we take on limited numbers, but then the client knows that they're not going to have to wait 15, 20, 25, 30 weeks yeah. for their wedding that's, that's film. Insane, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a long time for you to wait um, for your wedding film. Um, so, yeah, um, Claire's put things is worth having a second shoot and videographer as well. Yeah, and I see Alan's comment there. Yeah, it's good to hear from you, my man. Definitely. Yeah, de definitely, Claire. Um, it is definitely worth having a second shooter. And I'm really lucky. My son, and as you know, Lloyd, Dylan, um, who does weddings with me, he started off when he was 13. Um, collecting stuff for me um, because I was always when I first started I was always forgetting batteries and forgetting lenses and I would say Dylan can you run to the car can you run to the car and it was such a shame because he would have to run to the car but never once did he pull a face never once did he complain um, or do anything like that so for me um, having the second shooter now Dylan's now more um, more experienced in second shooting it's brilliant. And I think, as Claire says, it, it gives you so much more freedom from my perspective because if I'm away doing one-to-ones with you, I know that Dylan could possibly be with the guests mingling and capturing that footage. So I, I totally, totally agree, Claire. If, a lot of videographers are solo. Um, there is good videographers that do it solo and videographers that will do it with somebody else, but we always, if we can, bring Dylan along um, with us because as you say one it takes a load off of me um, and also it gives you the two different points of view um, as well so that's a really good point um, yeah, especially if there's a lot happening at the wedding see if it's a really yeah. busy wedding and, and it's a large venue it's uh, yeah. It can, it can, yeah and I think as well because like bridal prep um, a, lot of, a lot of clients you know well our clients know this that when we do bridal prep we will sometimes go and travel to see the groom yeah. Now, we don't charge any extra for that. Um, so sometimes, you know, we'll find that, you know, Dylan might stay with the bride and I'll jump in the car and I might go 10, 5, 10 minutes to go and see the groom. Yeah. And then I'll come back and collect Dylan and then we'll go to the, maybe the church and then from the church to the ceremony. And then, you know, so we maybe go to three or four places that day. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I always, again, I always put my, my thoughts into it as if, if I was getting married today or... If me and Laura were getting married today, I know Laura would want to see me getting partially dressed, if that makes sense, or yeah, me and yeah. Dylan getting dressed, or me and the groomsmen getting dressed. Now, it might only be five minutes of a clip, mm -hmm. but it's something that the bride usually doesn't get to see is the groom getting ready. So I, I always think I, I'm prepared to put myself in that position to go and drive to see the groom mm -hmm. um, and get that footage for the couple so yeah. that when they sit down and watch the wedding film, She's seen him getting ready and how the boys reacted and maybe having a drink or, or whatever. So it yeah. helps finish the story, doesn't it? It does. I think for, for me, um, I think if the groom and don't get me wrong, there's some grooms that maybe don't want to be filmed, which is which, which is totally okay, because um, we don't want to do anything that the, the grooms don't want to do. If they don't want to be filmed, then of course, if all parties are happy with that, then then great. But it's maybe after the event, the bride may say, do you know, it'd be nice maybe just seeing you getting your waistcoat and your jacket on or, you yeah. know, just seeing little bits and bobs. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, sorry, going back going back to the, it was nice of Claire to, to point that out about the, the second shooters. Um, but, yeah, going, going back to the point, six to eight weeks is usually our turn, our turn around. Yeah. Um, that's, that. that's, that's the kind of industry standard, isn't it? I think so. I, I, I mean, it maybe fluctuates between videographers and photographers. I, I honestly don't know. I, don't, I haven't looked into like what mm -hmm. other videographers. I, I, I have. You probably noticed as well. Maybe some people will maybe raise a concern that they've not maybe not had their their video within 20, 25 weeks of having their wedding. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, you know, that, I could, that's just that's just uh, yeah. That's just and, I, and I can I can sort of like sympathise with that. Um, mm -hmm. If you're waiting, you know, nearly six months for a wedding film. So yeah. that's why, again, for us, it's about taking limited numbers on. Um, yeah. I think and then that way we know we're covering everything. If they've waited six months, they're going to wait another six months and they're still not going to have it. I think that's... Uh, yeah, because I think the problem you've I'm got... Is, something if that's the case, isn't it? Well, I think if you're waiting six months, the problem is you're, you're probably hitting peak season again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So totally. even if you get your wedding film from six months previous, the person that got their wedding done that weekend might be waiting eight months or nine months or 
That's or, right. or whatever. So our turnaround, we try and do a turnaround, as I say, within within six to eight weeks. Um, where do you host your, your photos for your clients, Lloyd? Uh, a gallery called Shootproof. Right. Um, so it gives them the option to, it's a link, it's password protected. Uh, they, they click on the link, they type in their email address and their password that I give them, um, which can be whatever they want. Um, and they can download their photos um, and they can also share the photos with their guests. If they want, they can also buy prints off the gallery. And uh, it's a company I use called Locks of Colour who are unbelievable with prints and uh, it gets delivered straight to their door. They choose the size. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they choose the size and then I need to okay it from mine just to make sure the top of their head isn't chopped off or whatever. And uh, and yeah, it's, they also do canvases. And and then if, if, if they want albums, generally they'd come to myself with their, and we would arrange their favorite 60, 70, 80 photos. And then I would make it up on the software and then I would show them what it would look like. If they want any changes, then we can do that. And then once they're happy, we send it off to print. Yeah, and there's there's a range of different cover materials and page thicknesses and obviously album sizes and box engraved. It's all it's all it's a world class setup. It's uh, oh excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. That was that was really nice. Buy memories by movie, saying this is a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's it's nice to hear, and it is it is. I, I totally agree with them. It's it's nice to hear. Sometimes, as you know, when you go to a wedding. Um, and you're speaking to like you, I, you know, you won't speak to another photographer, and I don't speak to another videographer when I'm at a wedding because that's I'm yeah. the videographer, and, uh -huh. you know, so there's not another videographer there. Right. It, it's sometimes nice to hear um, how other suppliers within the industry mm -hmm. um, cope with weddings on the day, and I think a lot of us probably have the same experiences. Yeah. Um, sometimes the the same problem solving that we, we have to do with each other, but I think for us, I think for me, and you're probably the same, Lloyd. Is uh, I've been very fortunate to to work with some excellent photographers uh -huh. and some excellent suppliers, um, mm -hmm. where we're all there for a purpose. Definitely, and they also know that it's key that we work really well together, which I think is is more than half the half the Definitely. battle. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's uh, it's so easy to find that you can be working with someone that's had a bad day, and it just <laughs> you just like stay out their way. You're fighting for the center spot, aren't you, in the first kiss kind of thing, rather than yeah. just working together. And it's just it's just a joy, then, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, sometimes I'll always try and communicate with the photographer. Um, I'll say to the photographer, "Listen, I'm I'm going to go halfway down the aisle for the first kiss. Do you want to come down with me?" So we're, we're shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. Um. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll even put my arm around the photographer so we're walking back together so we're not tripping up. Um, you did that the last probably, time with me. I, I, I probably Remember. cuddled you too much, Lloyd. I, 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 don't, I, don't. I was like, what's happening here? <laughs> You're like, why is he cuddling me? But, you know, I think if, you know, if, if I... I always try and have that kind of courtesy straight away with the photographers to try and build up that rapport. Um because I am one of these kind of probably videographers that like to contribute. Um, as you probably know, I'm not kind of one of yeah. these kind of um, videographers that just shoot off your shoulder and mm. just take your your call and your lines. Um, I usually always try and, and contribute something to the wedding. Definitely. I see Claire's written there, I booked Lloyd before I booked my venue. That was, uh, yeah, that, that was some day, Claire. Yeah. That was uh, that was up there with the best, yeah, definitely same too. Yeah, I, I think, I think as well. but I think that that's a really good point from Claire and Bruce. Though is, yeah. I've had some some couples that have wanted to book me, mm -hmm. um, and will say, Paul, I've just booked my venue. Are you free? And I'm maybe gone back and say, No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm booked that date. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it's you know if I if I give any tips to bride and grooms is if you really like the photographer, you really like your videographer, if the venue has a date available, then drop your photographer and videographer just a quick message and say, listen, this date is now, you know, being given to me by the venue. Are you guys free on this day? If so, I'm going to book the venue and I'm going to book you guys mm -hmm. as as well. Yeah. Um, and then that way you've got your main suppliers that you want. I think sometimes for me, it's, your photographer, your videographer are one of the most important supplies you will have on your day 
because after the wedding, your photography and your video are the things that are going to last for generations to come. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You know. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm glad um, Clay and Bruce brought that up. I think it's really important if you see somebody that you like, um, video videographer, photographer that you like, find out their dates, see if they're free. If so, get them all booked in, and you don't have to to have to worry about it. That's it, and it's and it's nice, it's nice getting it in the diary, and and can you, you, you the, as a supplier, you can almost like I've I've got like like for instance Bruce's wedding coming up, I'm absolutely buzzing for that. I'll be with you as well, Bruce and Alison seem absolutely lovely. It's just and it's a, it's going to have a kind of winter vibe about it as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, like you say, once it's in the diary, start looking forward to it all together, and uh, and then. Like say bouncing ideas, and once you have the FaceTime, you're you've got a, a wealth of knowledge and on all our plans. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree, um, and I think I think Claire's right. I mean, you have to you have to be quick. Um, I mean, we're fully booked. I think we're fully booked this year. I think I've got one space if I remember right, one space for this year, and almost fully, um, almost fifty percent booked for next year. And now yeah. got bookings for twenty twenty six. And I think a lot of brides and, and, and grooms as well, like Bruce, is thinking, do you know what? Let's let's get this. Hey. Um... <laughs> All right, There's Tommy. Colin. How you doing, um, man? I think it's a case of, like as you say, Lloyd, um, it's getting these suppliers booked and then you don't have to worry about it. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. That's it. So I think that's almost us. Um yeah, that was that was good fun, Paul. That it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's nice. You know, I think it's nice for couples. Um, sometimes couples have a lot of questions that maybe are, are scared to ask, um, or maybe they've not thought of. And I think sometimes you know, just having a bit of fun like this, nothing serious, mm -hmm. coming on, discussing our days, um, discussing when the best time to to do like dress reveals and what have you, that first kiss, that important three second first kiss, looking into each other's eyes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's all really nice stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if you've just tuned in and you you are getting married, I'd advise you watching the whole hour and 18 minutes. <laughs> God, is but it that yeah. long? I, uh, <laughs> I, I was I was saying to you, Lloyd. I was like, Lloyd, if, if we manage to go do fifteen minutes, um, uh, it will be okay, you know. Oh, it's been great. It's been great. I was a nervous wreck when I first this right. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, this is your double O one. Yeah, I'm um, next. I'm looking at um, getting. I'll just tell you who I'm who, who I'm getting. Um, Caitlin Kiddy Daycare. Right. I'm hoping to have Caitlin on. Caitlin, I've met a couple of times at weddings, and right. what she does is she is a, a nanny and babysitter for weddings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's probably something that's really interesting for couples. They might not have little ones themselves, but they might have guests coming with little ones. And I think it's to try and keep them entertained and what have you. So I'm trying to organise this with, with Caitlin. Um, mm. I was going to make it for next Wednesday and then realised I've got a wedding on Wednesday. Oh, have you? <laughs> yes. And then oh, I'll, see yeah. you the, I'll see you the following week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that, I suppose a two-week gap is, is pretty fine, isn't it? I know I, I'd be more worried, Lloyd, if I'd done the, the this with Caitlin next Wednesday and I got a call from the bride asking where I was, saying, yeah, yeah, uh, you're not meant to be at my wedding instead of doing yeah. this call. You know, the, no, the, no. The, see, this see, live me, stream. Yeah, see, for me, I've been steady up until now, but for me, this weekend is the start of wedding season for me, and it's just it's just every week from there, uh, which is great because it's uh, because the last the last month I've caught up with weddings and I've done some personal stuff tax returns stuff like that just just kind of even jobs around the house which i absolutely hate but um but yeah but now that it's back on it's like every day will be computer in front of me um i see claire's just put my pete wanted a horse in her pictures lloyd got us a horse in her pictures lol what, yeah what, 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 was it a real horse it was it was a it was a lloyd photoshopped horse but it was a it was a it looked great yeah so they wanted a horse in the field, and uh, so I put the horse in the field. But it, it looked, it looked hundred percent amazing. So I gave them obviously the picture without the horse and the picture with the horse. 
just oh, because, that's so nice. Because when we met up, he says I would like a like a big black horse in the background of one of our pictures. Uh, that, so oh, see that. That, that that's when you go above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. That right. that was a Tim Burton themed wedding. So I was I was messing about with camera EVs to get the sky like really like, even in camera the sky just looked like Tim Burton like Beetlejuice. It was amazing. And, oh, was uh, good. Yeah, and when Claire got her pictures, there were and and her wedding video, her video was class as well. Absolute class. Yeah. Good. Good. What a day. Yeah. Aye, but no, if you're happy with that, Paul, that's... Uh... Yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. And thanks so much, Lloyd, for, for, for joining me um, and you. coming on. Yeah, and thanks everyone yeah. for tuning in. That's much Yeah, thanks, everybody. And as I say, if, you, if you're watching this for the first time or if you've just tuned in, why don't you go back to the beginning um, and watch it and hopefully we'll give you some hints and tips. And as I say, hopefully we'll have Caitlin from Kitty's Daycare on next time to, to talk about um, her company and what she she does for for weddings and looking after the little ones yeah and i see see uh alan and tommy in the comments you could have them as future guests well they, listen if they want it drop me an email guys we'll get yeah, you on no yeah, problem yeah. at all um absolutely no problem anybody in fact any suppliers anybody that wants to come on and, ch and chat um about your company or whatever please just drop me an email um and i'll happily um Thank I'll you, happily Bruce. invite you on. Yeah, All right, so yeah. we'll, we'll give it a day. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much, Bruce and Claire. Thanks, uh, Memories by Movie. Thanks, Tommy, for, for, for tuning in. Um, don't forget our lovely Kirsten, who always drops me a, a wee message yeah, now Tommy. and again. Um, and as I say, anything else, just drop me an email. Okay, Doc? Lovely. Lovely. Thank All you, right, guys. Well, thanks so much, mate. Yes. We'll, we'll get you on again. All right? Lovely. I'll, I'll same time next year. <laughs> Same time next year. <laughs> no, just whenever, man, definitely. All right. See you right. later. See you, Alan. Cheers. Cheers. Bye -bye. Bye bye. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in for that. Hopefully, you found that informative with, with Lloyd. Um, it was more just to have a bit of fun and give you a bit of insight in regards to your wedding suppliers and when to book us and what have you. Um, any questions, don't hesitate to, to drop me a message or visit our website at robertsonstudios.co.uk um, and I'll happily come back um, with any any answers to questions that you might have. Thanks so much again for everybody for tuning in um, and hopefully we'll see you next week with Caitlin. See you later.